David Hume, An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding. Embark on an intellectual journey through David Hume's An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding, a groundbreaking exploration of human knowledge and experience. Delve into the heart of the Enlightenment era, where reason and experience were the ultimate drivers of empirical philosophy. Discover Hume's foundational distinction between impressions and ideas, and his limiting of reason to human experience. Learn how Hume tackled the long-standing debate on free will versus determinism, and challenged the validity of inductive reasoning. In this illuminating summary, we'll uncover the gems of Hume's philosophy, touching on topics like cause and effect, radical skepticism, human instinct, and the power of habit. Hume's Empiricism Unraveled Born during the Enlightenment, David Hume introduced a secular philosophy that emphasized the importance of experience in acquiring knowledge. He distinguished between impressions, direct sensory experiences, and ideas, which are formed from the imagination or memory. Hume argued that ideas are derived from impressions, and if an abstract idea, such as God, cannot be traced back to a direct impression, then it is considered groundless. The optimistically progressive period of the Enlightenment gave rise to great thinkers like Descartes, Locke, and Berkeley, who sought to ground their philosophies in reason. Born right in the middle of this intellectual era, David Hume contributed his distinct empirical philosophy as a response to these developments. While he continued to uphold the significance of reason in justifying beliefs, he limited its scope to the realm of human experience, creating a purely secular philosophy. At the heart of Hume's philosophy lies the main message, all knowledge derives from experience. To comprehend this idea, it is crucial to understand the distinction between impressions and ideas. Impressions refer to direct sensory experiences and emotions, such as seeing a color or feeling angry. In contrast, ideas are derived from the imagination or memory and represent a diluted and vague version of the original impressions. According to Hume, ideas originate from impressions, we cannot have an idea until we've experienced the impression that produced it. An example for this would be understanding the concept of love only after having truly experienced it. You might argue that your imagination allows you to think of ideas that you haven't directly experienced in reality. While that may be true, Hume explains that ideas, evoked by the imagination, are constructed from simpler impressions that we have experienced. For instance, we can imagine a gold mountain by combining the simple ideas of gold and a mountain. Hume's assertion that all ideas stem from simple impressions paves the way for determining the validity of an abstract idea or concept, such as God. In order to accept an abstract idea as meaningful, one must be able to trace its origin back to an impression. If it cannot be linked to a direct experience, the idea can be legitimately rejected as empty and baseless. It is through this framework that Hume's empirical philosophy revolutionized the way people think about reason, ideas, and their connection to human experiences. Unraveling Cause and Effect Our understanding of cause and effect is based on the assumption that certain events necessarily lead to particular outcomes. This idea comes from our observations of repeated patterns in the past but does not account for the intrinsic nature of necessity. In fact, our experiences provide no evidence of a compulsory relationship between events, leading us to question the nature of cause and effect as mere constant conjunctions rather than necessary associations. We often assume that our knowledge of cause and effect relationships arises from our past experiences, which helps us make predictions about the future. For instance, while playing pool, we expect the white ball to move the green ball when they collide, as this has been the recurring outcome previously. However, can we be certain that the green ball will indeed move this time or not, say, vanish suddenly? Our confidence in this situation stems from the belief that the white ball inherently necessitates the motion of the green ball, but is this conviction justified? The crux of the matter lies in our lack of experience in a necessity between events. We tend to perceive cause and effect relationships as essential and inseparable, believing that a specific cause can only yield a particular result. Take the example of placing an unprotected hand in fire, 
we expect it to burn, not freeze or turn into stone, as fire's nature doesn't allow for such outcomes. However, how do we substantiate this notion of necessity? When considering the origin of an idea, we need to identify the impression that led to it. Upon closer inspection, we realize that we have never experienced a mandatory connection between cause and event. Our encounters only consist of one event consistently followed by another, such as fire resulting in burns each time. However, we have never witnessed fire mandatorily followed by burning. In essence, the experience itself does not convey that the observed outcome is the only possible one that could stem from a cause. Thus, we haven't encountered any genuine necessity. Consequently, it's essential to reconsider our understanding of cause and effect as a simple constant conjunction of events rather than a compulsory connection. Our observations merely show that some events routinely follow others, but it's worth pondering whether our belief in the necessity of these relationships is warranted. The Limits of Inductive Reasoning Inductive reasoning, a widely accepted form of reasoning, involves drawing general conclusions from several specific observations. However, it is criticized for its vicious circularity, as it relies on the assumption that future events will reflect past ones. Consequently, we cannot rationally justify inductive reasoning since it relies on unproven assumptions, leaving us to accept that we have no rational basis for forming conclusions about the future. To develop broad theories, such as the necessary link between cause and effect, we often employ inductive reasoning, which allows us to make generalizations based on multiple individual observations. This reasoning method is at play when we infer that similar outcomes will occur in the future, given our past experiences. However, the influential philosopher David Hume challenged the validity of inductive reasoning, arguing that it possesses an inherent circularity. Rational justification for inductive reasoning proves elusive due to its very nature. Consider our shared belief in the sun rising tomorrow morning and the day after. We base this anticipation on inductive reasoning, as we feel confident in the sun's continuous rising after having observed it every day throughout our lives. While this may seem unquestionably reasonable, it is this very argument that necessitates a substantial assumption, the future will unfold in a manner consistent with the past. Yet, proving this assumption becomes a near impossibility. We cannot experience the future firsthand, nor discern the universe's underlying causes with complete certainty. The laws governing physics are based solely on previous observations, we cannot preclude the possibility of these laws changing overnight. One may argue that the unwavering nature of the laws of physics throughout our lives implies their continued stability into the future. However, such a justification, which is itself a product of inductive reasoning, entails another assumption that the future will resemble the past. Herein lies the vicious circularity identified by Hume. Given that inductive reasoning is dependent on unverifiable assumptions, its rational justification remains out of reach. Consequently, we must accept the astounding conclusion that our beliefs about future events, such as the sun's rising tomorrow, lack a rational basis. Habit and Instinct Over Reason Hume argues that humans are guided more by habit and instinct than reason, forming associations and expecting outcomes based on past experiences. This natural inclination, shared by our animal counterparts, ensures our survival and ability to navigate the world effectively. Philosopher David Hume demonstrates that we lack a rational basis for making inferences about the future. However, he acknowledges that skepticism has its limits. Even though our beliefs might not be rationally grounded, we still hold on to them. Inductive reasoning, our ability to draw conclusions and make predictions based on patterns, is a fundamental part of our daily decision-making process. Hume suggests that habit and necessity are more influential than reason in driving human behavior. The key takeaway from Hume's perspective is that our thought process stems from an instinctual place rather than rationality. We believe that causes are connected to their effects due to habit, after observing one event followed by another frequently, our minds establish a connection between them. Witnessing the first event conditions us to expect the second. An example of this is how young children learn through their experiences. 
A child who touches a lit candle flame learns that it causes pain, and consequently, learns to avoid touching flames. This learning process does not result from abstract reasoning but rather instinct. Dependence on instinct proves beneficial since it is more reliable and efficient than reasoning. Imagine a world where every decision demanded conscious reasoning to evaluate cause and effect relationships. The human species would not have survived under such conditions. Hence, instinct proves crucial for our existence. This inborn inclination towards inductive reasoning is not exclusive to humans, animals also learn from their experiences and associate causes with their effects. For instance, a dog learns that the sound of a whistle indicates their owner's presence or that the sight of a bull means they will be fed. Dogs make inferences beyond their immediate perception using past experiences. Hume's insight reveals that humans share more intellectual tendencies with their animal relatives than they might initially recognize. Both humans and animals rely heavily on habit and instinct to make sense of the world, navigate it effectively, and ensure their continued survival. Free will meets determinism. Alongside the long-standing philosophical debate of free will and determinism, Hume redefines these concepts as compatible, illustrating that human actions are both free and determined. By viewing determinism as the notion that actions can have multiple potential effects, and free will as the space between inner motivations and outward behaviors, Hume paves the way for a fresh perspective on human freedom and causal relationships. The persistent question of human freedom has troubled the minds of philosophers for centuries, raising doubts about our ability to make independent decisions when our actions are governed by instincts. This enduring argument, free will versus determinism, appears to present mutually exclusive concepts, leaving many to wonder how to reconcile the apparent contradiction. David Hume, however, had a different perspective. Instead of choosing one side over the other, he argued that the debate was built upon a misunderstanding of the terms involved. By redefining free will and determinism under his theory of cause and effect, Hume revealed that these concepts can coexist harmoniously. According to Hume, necessary causation emerges from our habits, rather than strictly from the external world. Under this lens, events hold the potential to incite numerous effects beyond those that we typically observe. For instance, while we generally see a flame melt wax, this outcome is not set in stone. It remains possible that an alternate effect could occur. This perspective on causation extends to human behavior. Much like physical processes that demonstrate consistent cause and effect relationships, humans exhibit patterns in the connection between their inner motivations and resulting actions. Hunger, for example, typically prompts us to search for food, and anger often leads to raised voices. In both scenarios, the behavior emerges as it usually follows specific internal states. However, Hume notes that there is no necessary link between these motivations and responses. We can resist eating when hungry or refrain from raising our voices when angry. Comparing human behavior with physical processes highlights a significant parallel, both exhibit regularities in cause and effect, but neither showcases a fixed relationship between the two. It is precisely within this gap, the one that exists between our motivations and actions, that the concept of free will thrives. Reframing human behavior and physical processes as a blend of free will and determinism opens up an alternative view that embraces the complexity of human experience and embraces the interplay of causal relationships and personal freedom. Rejecting Miracles Rationally David Hume's empirical philosophy questioned the credibility of miracles as evidence for religious doctrines, emphasizing the importance of evaluating the reliability of testimony. By comparing the stability of natural laws to the trustworthiness of human accounts, Hume concludes it is irrational to believe in miracles, providing a relevant lesson in our era of fake news and misinformation. In the 18th century, David Hume's radical take on empirical philosophy shook the foundations of society's belief in miracles. Miracles served as powerful evidence for religious doctrines, but Hume provided a rational argument for rejecting these supernatural events. One example from that time involves the account of a French cardinal, who claimed to have met a man who regrew his leg after applying holy oil. 
While modern sensibilities dismiss such stories as fiction, being able to evaluate the testimony of others is a valuable skill in our age inundated by misinformation and fake news. Hume's philosophy offers us an effective method to assess the validity of such accounts. The overarching message is that believing in miracles is never a rational decision. Testimony is undoubtedly a valuable source of human knowledge, allowing us to expand our understanding by acknowledging others' experiences. However, the reliability of testimony varies, human beings are prone to errors, exaggeration, and the desire to tell compelling stories, which often incorporate unbelievable elements. So, how can we judge the truthfulness of a testimony? For ordinary accounts, we can assess their plausibility by weighing them against our past experiences. But verifying accounts of miraculous events proves to be a challenge. These occurrences are typically unique and cannot be replicated, making it impossible to draw comparisons with previous experiences. For instance, witnessing a dead body coming back to life or a limb regrowing is beyond the scope of our mundane experiences. In such cases, testimony stands as the sole evidence in favor of the miracle. However, we know from experience that testimonies are not always reliable. On the other hand, we have natural laws, which have remained consistent throughout our lives. Given that our experiences of nature's laws are far more dependable than human testimony, it is always more rational to disbelieve stories of miracles. Hume's 18th century philosophy highlights the importance of critical thinking and evaluating testimonies, which remains relevant today. Challenging the rationality of believing in miracles offers a timely lesson in a world where we must navigate through an overwhelming amount of information and misinformation. Embracing Modest Skepticism Hume's empirical philosophy emphasizes the importance of sensory experience in understanding the world, while acknowledging that our senses can deceive us. He argues that although radical skepticism is impossible to consistently practice, incorporating a healthy amount of skepticism into our lives can help us reject prejudicial thinking and promote humility, leading to personal growth and better understanding of others. Hume's empirical philosophy centers on the idea that sensory experiences are the sole mode through which we learn about the world. Despite the fact that our senses can be deceptive, Hume admits that trusting our senses is necessary to perceive reality. For instance, our senses can be deceiving when an or seems bent in water, or when an object seems duplicated if held too close to the eyes. There is also the debate about the role of the mind in shaping our sensory experiences. Philosophers have argued that aspects like color and sound might be mind-generated, suggesting that our perception of an external reality might simply be a construct of our thoughts. Hume, however, points out that practicing radical skepticism towards our senses and the world around us would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. By attempting to deny all beliefs, one would be rendered incapable of functioning in everyday life. Instead, Hume contends that setting practical boundaries for skeptical philosophies is necessary. The takeaway here is that integrating a healthy amount of skepticism fosters a fulfilling life. Habit prevails over reason, we cannot resist the urge to rely on our senses and the belief in an external world. However, this recognition raises questions about the value of skepticism, is it simply a mental exercise? Radical skepticism offers one positive aspect, when you doubt everything, including reason itself, you become less certain in your own assumptions and more humble. Bringing this humility into other aspects of life equates to moderate skepticism, an attitude that demonstrates openness and avoids dogmatism. Additionally, adopting moderate skepticism can lead to a healthier life. Such an attitude counters biased thinking or narrow-mindedness that may have been formed in earlier years. Humility encourages one to be an active learner and a better listener, embracing the ideas of others rather than dismissing them outright. To avoid succumbing to falsehoods and illusions, it is essential to be mindful of our predisposition to err. Embracing modest skepticism not only nurtures personal growth but also promotes a better understanding of the perspectives of others. David Hume's An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding stands as an essential work in Enlightenment philosophy. 
Its bold assertions, such as the idea that all knowledge is derived from experience, inspire us to rethink our assumptions about cause and effect, the limits of reason, and the role of instinct in our daily lives. Confronting the challenges of inductive reasoning and radical skepticism, Hume highlights the importance of habit and practicality in understanding the truths of the world. By demonstrating the compatibility of human action with both free will and determinism, Hume also paves the way for a unique outlook on human freedom. Ultimately, this insightful summary equips us with vital lessons and takeaways from Hume's empowering philosophy, encouraging us to embrace a life grounded in modest skepticism and intellectual humility, 